Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of Watts collection. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at Gary's really incredible collection. And, and it's interesting and on so many different levels, I think you're going to like it. So let's get started right away. Um, uh, first of all, the, there's three Seikos and they're all pretty much alike. They have different dials and colors and some other differences, but they're all the uh, with the date at three o'clock. The uh, Below that, there are three Omega constellations. Now, the interesting thing about the uh, constellations on the far right is that they have possibly, and this is, uh, Gary wasn't sure, but he thought so, was that those are the cases designed by Gerald Gento, which is sort of a cool thing. I didn't know about it. C uh, type case. All right. Um, now, this next group of watches is extremely interesting. Up at the top, there are a couple GMTs. Uh, the Grand Seiko um, automatic GMT is really a beautiful one, but it, it's, uh, Gary said that for flying, Gary's a pilot, he said, not, not, probably not something to bang around the cockpit with. Now, in 1983, he got the, um, a, G, a Rolex GMT, uh, and it was 830 bucks, <laughs> which is like, what? Uh, not only that, but they, uh, a lot of the guys he uh, flew with said, hey, you can pick them up in Vietnam for about 300 and something dollars, which I thought, whoa. Anyway, now, I refer to it as a real pilot's watch, uh, mainly because it's got the GMT function. And uh, it, Gary, who is a real pilot, uh, said that he thought it was sort of funny. Uh, they talk about pilot watches. He said, real pilots wear you know, uh, G-Shocks and you know, whatever, whatever is coming. Uh, but this to me is a real pilot's watch is that here you got something with a GMT, you know, you got your Zulu time that you can set it to. And uh, so anyway, so the uh, Rolex GMT master, is my vote for a real uh, pilot's watch. Uh, down below are a couple uh, Zenises. Uh, the Zenis El Primero is an extremely accurate watch, a, a chronograph with uh, dated around oh, about 4.30. And then next to it is a gold uh, Zenith stretch watch uh, from the 50s, or the 40s, I think, one of the two. It's another, it's a neat little watch, so. All right, the, uh, this next group, up at the top, you got a couple really nice brigades. You have a brigade a marine automatic with a big date. That's one I, I like a lot. Uh, and then next to it is a brigade classique uh, 5140 with the gold case. Beautiful watch. And uh, lower left is a Grand Seiko. Now this was something that was uh, one of uh, Geary's newer watches. It's a very pretty watch. To the right of that is a Credor. Now, we had, I had talked about Credors, and I said, I don't think they make uh, sports watches, but they do, uh, but just not very many. This one is called the uh, Credor Phoenix, which is a sports watch, and the dial is enamel or porcelain. Now, for a sports watch, that sounds <laughs> really uh, special. All right, so we got uh, this next one we enter into a very interesting area. These are electronic watches. The Omega Constellation Electronic F uh, 300 Hertz, we had one of those earlier. And I think that and the uh, Bomb at Mercier uh, Tronosonic, I think these were on license using the Accutron uh, tuning fork for for their uh, accuracy and below there are a couple accutrons one with the sort of the open face and the other is uh, is is in a uh, dress watch now as for accutron though they made uh, quite a few different dials for them uh, the one on the far left is called the space view the one in the middle of railroad and then uh, the physician or doctor's watch on the far right the interesting thing about the space view is that that was in competition 
with the uh, Omega Speedmaster. Now remember, this is accurate. These are very accurate watches for the time. And uh, in fact, this one was used in uh, one of the Gemini flights. The Gemini flights were before the Apollo uh, flights, and they were sort of working their way up to the uh, eventual moon flight. So this is one that's been in space too. It's called the Space View. I never knew that before, but that was very cool. All right, uh, here are a couple uh, at the top there, a couple of Illinois watches. So uh, these are uh, two pocket watches. And uh, below are a couple IWC watches. Now these are from the 50s and 60s. Both of them have genuine IWC movements and they're, they're really very nice examples of IWC. I've complained a lot about IWC for having uh, movements that they don't exactly explain where they came from, uh, but these these are these are the kinds of things I like to see in IWC having their own movement, doing some interesting things with it, uh, like they used to, and that's how they built a reputation. All right, all right. Uh, now next is a watch I absolutely love. It's a H Moser at C. And this is one, uh, it's called the Endeavor Big Date. And I don't, I don't think they make them still. And it's got uh, the HMC uh, uh, 343 seven day power reserve, 18,000 VPH. This is like it's a craftsman's special. I love this watch. This is just the neatest watch. Uh, I, I like Moser's anyway. <laughs> Uh, because they're so well engineered and they're so well crafted. I mean, you have sort of the best of both worlds. Uh, here, this one's reference uh, 342502. Beautiful watch. Now, uh, moving right along here. Now, here's another one that is, this is uh, one of the newest ones that uh, uh, Geary has, and it's a uh, Parmigiani, uh, they usually call them QS for quality fluorier. Now, Quality Fleurier is like the Geneva Seal, except the Geneva Seal can only be applied to watches from the Geneva Canton. And uh, since there, the Fleurier is from, boy, Fleurier, I think is New Chatel uh, Canon, uh, but I'm not positive, okay? Anyway, but these are ones were made in Fleurier. And the... Um, not all of them have this, so if you, and it goes through a lot of tests, it goes through far more tests and proofs than the um, uh, Geneva seal does. And <laughs> so it's, I mean, to have a uh, quality Fleurier is, is, is quite something. And this is a beautiful one in gold. Love this, and it's a Copa, and it's just beautiful. And then on the back, they have that, uh, that big gold, 22 karat gold uh, rotor with the um, barley corn Gilloche on it. Just a flat out gorgeous watch. New, I was taking a look at the new ones of these and the new ones are, they don't look much different. They have, they move the date up to the top <laughs> and a few other uh, sort of external things that they did to it. Uh, and they, they were, I think it was around 22,000. Uh, Gary, though, got a much better deal on this one, and uh, so that's it's the kind of watch I like. I have two uh, Parmigianis, and just, I'm just nuts about both of them. All right, uh, now here, uh, this last one I want to take a look at is really two very interesting watches. First of all, is a uh, Patek Philippe Calatrava uh, 2532. Now, this is from the 1950s. And uh, I, I've got one from 68, and they're, they're, they're great watches. I mean, they're wonderful watches. Uh, the, the thing that's interesting about this one, it has luminous hands and a screw-down back. Uh, mine, the back on mine is one of those pop-off that make me nervous. <laughs> I, I never open it, I'll put it that way. Uh, I'd be tempted with a uh, with a screw down back, and then the luminous hands. Uh, mine doesn't have luminous hands; they're just regular gold hands. Now, next to it is one that uh, Gary uh, 
sent along the picture of is the it's called the Hamden Watch Company 105 and uh, up there at the top in the center is a smaller picture of the case and but the movement and the way that case opens for a pocket watch I thought was really interesting and uh, you can it's reflected the way it's opened is that the top part is reflecting uh, the movement down below it's a beautiful movement uh, with those bridges going all the way across and then you have a couple smaller bridges just this side of the uh, the the balance wheel and each one of those is sort of holding the um, a gear there one of the uh, from the gear train and if there's there's a screw for each one of them which means that for service and you can get to them a lot easier and for a pretentious watchmaker like myself <laughs> anything that makes it easier I'm all for but yeah here you have a collection that is is it has a, an ingenuity to it it has creativity it has a lot of variety there there doesn't seem to be any I guess you'd call it a pretense to this collection the collection is, is a guy who just loves watches and uh, has extremely good taste in, in picking I mean it doesn't he he's not it's oh well it's a it's a tuning fork in it or it's got a battery in it that's okay I mean they're with the Accutron I mean it's one thing having one Accutron but having all of the ones that he has because some of them were even though they were Accutrons they were in another watch with different names and so I thought that was that I thought was really cool that's I think what watch collection is about like uh you have a watch with some kind of movement in it that's interesting or some kind of feature about it that it's in, that's interesting watch collections should be interesting <laughs> to you anyway all right well listen um here's this really great collection and somebody said well you know what would what would i suggest i'm not really sure it's such a cool collection i'd probably I mean, I like the I like the Mosers a lot, and I like the Parmigianis, and he's got he's got a couple of those. I would certainly recommend a, a Lang and Hein or a Rolf Lang. Either one of those, I think, would be a great addition to the collection because they're both handmade, and that's usually the price goes through the roof on those. Uh, FP Jorn uh, would be another one, an entry level FP Jorn and. Uh, uh, Chronomet Souverain. Uh, I, I wouldn't recommend a Chronomet Blue, not because I don't like blues. I like them very much, but rather they, first of all, they're they're hard to get. They have the price has just gone crazy. They're made of tantalum. I mean, they're for like a good knock around sports watch. But the good buys is that you can find a gold uh, Chronomet Souverain. For the low 20s uh, if you can find them <laughs> but that, they're becoming rare too and the the advantage of the chronomet surveying over the blue it has uh, they have the power reserve indicator uh, so those are some things that I'd suggest but I'd also suggest just f I mean what you have now like I, you know find something that's sort of interesting I found my my outlaw collection with the uh, uh, Jacques 736 and that's, a, that's as much fun as the most expensive watch I have. I mean, you can find joy, or even this. This is my this is my regulator, uh, my two hundred dollar regulator. I wanted a regulator, so I got a two, I got one. Okay, well, listen. Uh, I'd like to hear from you. Any suggestions you might have, and uh, what you think of uh, Gary's collection and. Until next Friday, this is Bill Sanders for Watch Art Sci, the art and science of watch collection. Of course, this is always a, an invitation to subscribe if you'd like.